third world commodity exporting countries. Why do, why do you say that, caller? Well, it seems to me that Russia is moving to make their ruble convertible into gold probably in January 1992, and that this is a move worldwide away from the debt-heavy dollar, and that that would be a positive to generating an increase in standard of living of the 3.5 billion people in the third world who would then return their dollars to the U.S., re-employing Americans. And that is part and parcel of the New World Economic Order, in my opinion. Okay. Thanks for your call. We appreciate it. Lewis Wolf, co-editor of Covert Action Information Bulletin. First of all, your reaction to this morning's uh, proceedings in the vote? Uh, I'm not surprised by the vote. Um, frankly, it, uh, it comes almost to where it, it, looked, it would be uh, as of the middle of last week. The only surprise, I guess, was some of the, were some of the things that were stated by a couple of the senators. Uh, but the final vote uh, really is, is not a surprise. I think it probably would have been, instead of 11 to 4, it would have been 13 to 2 or even 14 to 1, uh, except for the testimony of several of the witnesses who testified and who gave sworn testimony uh, challenging uh, Mr. Gates's appointment. What happens next? Well, uh, it, it uh, will go before the floor of the, of the Senate, the full Senate, uh, I believe sometime next week, although that's unclear exactly when. My understanding is that uh, the, the committee has requested uh, other documents uh, from the CIA, which they've yet to have been, have, uh, been provided. Uh, and I was told by once, one of the aides that it's about 20% uh, of what they've requested uh, still yet to come in. And it strikes me as a bit strange that they hold a vote before they have all the information. How did you cover this story? Well, I was here uh, from start to finish, um, um, along with a number of other journalists, and uh, have been interested in these matters for many years. Um, I interviewed a number of the senators. I interviewed uh, other people uh, who were on the staff and um, made it my business to really find out what was more than what was in the public record or in the public testimony. It seems to me that uh, in these matters many times that uh, we don't get the whole story uh, when we watch a hearing like this. And uh, though there was some very vociferous and very uh, riveting testimony uh, on both sides of the issue, uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and that's really part of my, my effort is to, is to know what's going on. In your mind, what stands out the most during these uh, proceedings? Uh, it's the direct contradiction between uh, what Mr. Gates has offered as uh, his vision and his history at the CIA and the facts. Uh, the facts as not only offered by and presented in, in very um, credible way, by numerous uh, people, and uh, particularly Melvin Goodman, Jennifer Glaudemans, and Hal Ford, uh, as well as several sworn uh, statements by others who did not appear before the committee, uh, who challenged uh, Mr. Gates' uh, credibility while he was at the CIA, uh, the, the way that he had, uh, had uh, as they say, cooked the intelligence. Uh, the way that he had um, antagonized many people within the CIA on in different directorates, not only in the, in the intelligence directorate or the analytical side of the CIA, but also in the operations directorate. Um, and uh, apparently the committee has received numerous calls, um, some of them anonymous, some of them um, identifying themselves, of people who are today working at the CIA who, uh, who differ with Mr. Gates's view of where the CIA should be going. Robert Gates was nominated in May. What issues surrounded the delay for these hearings? Uh, well, of course, um, as, you, as you and your viewers know, he had to withdraw his nomination um, or, and was pressed to do so by the White House in 1987 when he first came up uh, to be, his, his nomination first came up after the death of uh, Mr. Casey. Um, as you know, he was, in fact, acting director uh, for five months immediately uh, when Mr. Casey took ill in, 19, in December of 86. Um, I think uh, the, the primary questions that arose at that time was what he knew and when he knew it. 
uh, with respect to the Iran-Contra uh, matters, the diversion of funds to the Contras in Nicaragua, as well as the sale of arms uh, to Iran. Uh, all of that, of course, uh, now is, is history, and the American people know a lot of what happened. We still don't know it all, and perhaps we never will know it all. Uh, Gates, however, knows a lot more than he admits. Um, during uh, the uh, part of the reason I think that, the, that his, uh, uh, it's such a uh, controversial issue is that he, uh, in his answers to interrogatories from the Senate Intelligence Committee, he offered uh, 33 I can't remembers and 40 I don't knows uh, to questions which were quite precise. Later in his sworn testimony, in answers to questions, and, and especially when he presented his, uh, his 20 uh, rebuttals uh, to, to these matters, uh, he suddenly found his memory, and uh, with the help of the White House and the CIA, which provided him mountains of, uh, of document uh, information. If you've just joined us, uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee voted this morning by a vote of 11 to 4 to send the nomination of Robert Gates on to the full Senate. A vote uh, on his confirmation as the new director of the CIA is expected uh, within the next week. Our guest is Lewis Wolf, who is the co-editor of Covert Action Information Bulletin. We are opening up our phone lines. Uh, we'll be getting to your calls in about a minute. Keep in mind, if you phone C-SPAN within the last 30 days, make room for others to get through with their questions and comments. And again, uh, for our Western and Mountain Time Zone uh, callers, the number is 202-783-2727. And for you folks who live on the East Coast or Central Time Zones, 202-628-2525. Before we get to our first call, what is the Covert Action Information Bulletin? Uh, the magazine, it's a quarterly magazine we've been publishing uh, continuously since 1978, uh, researching, uh, documenting as best we can uh, the activities not only of the CIA but of the overall U.S. intelligence apparatus. There are no less than 18 federal intelligence agencies, so it's not just the CIA. Um, we have over the years uncovered a number of major stories um, in the field of U.S. disinformation, some of which was, uh, was confirmed during testimony in this hearing, uh, in these hearings about Mr. Gates. We uncovered uh, some of the facts concerning U.S. involvement uh, in, uh, in Nicaragua, in El Salvador, in Angola, in Mozambique, uh, and in other uh, secret wars, if you will, inverted uh, quotes, uh, throughout the world. Uh, we, we uncovered the fact and, and, and reported that the CIA had over 50 major covert operations during the tenure of, of uh, William Casey. And uh, some of those operations go on today. Uh, I was uh, interested to note during the, uh, during the hearings that uh, when Senator Chafee, who preceded me on this broadcast, uh, asked uh, Robert Gates about the magazine, and uh, he said, are they still around anymore? Uh, Mr. Gates's answer, no, sir. Well, I want to assure Mr. Gates, if he's watching, that we are still around. Our first caller, Chicago, Illinois. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Wolf. Good morning. I have several questions I'd like to ask you. First of all, uh, can you tell me who it is that limits what is made public? Is it just an arbitrary thing they can do and say, that's top secret, and therefore it doesn't go out, even though... It really isn't, and it would, might be something the public would not know. Is it? That's the first question. Okay. Yes. The second, the second question I have is, I have a complaint, a real complaint. I listen to people calling in, and personally, I'm independent. I've never voted a straight ticket in my life, mm -hmm. and I have respect for some Republicans and some Democrats. But to say I would vote for any Republican or any Democrat, don't you believe it? I wouldn't. Okay. That's what. That's why I want to say this. I listen to people coming in, and they make judgments. If I can just, the minute they open their mouth and say 10 words, I know they're way over here on the right or they're way over here on the left. Mm -hmm. And they're making statements that are stupid, you know? They're just absolutely stupid on the basis of what they know. Now, you know more, much more than the general public. Maybe a good idea if we all got your magazine, okay? Thank you, sir. I, in answer to your question about secrecy, uh, secrecy is uh, the hallmark of Washington, uh, not just in the area of intelligence, but during the uh, Reagan-Bush uh, era, and we have to see it as a, as a period, as an era. It's not simply 
in four-year um, uh, periods. Uh, the, the secrecy has just transformed this government, uh, and it's, uh, it's expanded and deepened and widened beyond all proportions and uh, all legitimate uh, uh, proportions in my view. And it's an excuse, the national security excuse uh, to cover up the misdeeds of government uh, is used again and again and again uh, and, and I'm, perhaps I think I wouldn't be uh, out of line to say it will continue. Uh, whoever is in the White House, Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative, uh, national security, as it's called, is invoked when it's convenient. Obviously, I'm the first to say that there is a legitimate national security concern, but the national security of this country is not defended through secrecy. National security is defended through open government, through the, uh, the people of this country knowing what its government is doing with our money and in our name around the world as well as here at home. Uh, the CIA um, under Reagan was authorized to carry out domestic operations through an executive order that was signed by Reagan in, in December of 1981. Uh, that executive order is still in force today. Most Americans, I assume, don't even know that that's the case. They assume that the CIA operates only overseas. Uh, there are other uh, areas I could mention. For example, the expansion of, uh, of the use of uh, executive orders under Presidents Reagan and Bush executive orders have become uh, the way, the, the pattern. Um, and it, it, it strikes me as very strange that an executive order, which becomes law as of the minute it's signed by the president, uh, does not go before the Congress. So uh, that's in partial answer to your question. That is also, in many cases, those executive orders are secret. Lewis Wolf has been co-editor of the Covert Action Information Bulletin since 1978. Our next caller is from Dayton, Ohio. Good morning to you. Good morning. I have several points to make, and I'll try to make them brief. Okay. First of all, I find it absolutely incredible that a man who's in charge of an intelligence agency can say he didn't know what was going on. The second thing is, anybody that disagreed with him was a liar, a perjurer. Now, we're going back to Thomas. How, why did he give all these glowing uh, reviews for the people that had worked for him after they left? And why did he fire a woman when she called a man a faggot? And then she turned right around and left the man stay in the job. Third point, I think all of our people in Washington need to be kicked out of office because they've all prostituted their vote. They are not serving the American people. The president is not serving the CIA. They're just in there for whatever they can get out of it, and the power, the imperial presidency, a man that's controlling the CIA, the courts, and every agency. Older people can't get a job. People are out of work, and he dares say that it'll break the budget. He doesn't give a damn about breaking the budget for anything else. Your reaction? Well, I, I, I find myself in partial agreement uh, with, with what the caller said. I think that uh, uh, budgets which... Uh, assume uh, untold billions of dollars, the uh, intelligence budget being in the range, and it's the biggest secret in Washington, but generally it's believed to be 30 to 40 billion dollars uh, for overall intelligence, not only the CIA. The CIA's budget is estimated between 10 and 16 billion dollars, I think probably on the, in between that figure. Uh, there are some uh, 30,000 plus uh, employees at the CIA, uh, and these budgets continue to go up. Now, there is talk now, including in this committee, of bringing the budgets down. Uh, but if, if even if they cut almost uh, by a third or a quarter or a half, that's still, it seems to me, a bloated budget. When there are people unemployed in our streets, there are people who are homeless, and there are very serious domestic uh, and foreign policy problems, uh, which the CIA doesn't seem to be willing to address, only uh, in a very, I think, distorted manner uh, through secret intervention. Uh, it strikes me as very strange that the president, who is, a, a, as far as we know, the only president who's ever worked at the CIA, uh, is a man who still seems to have one foot in the CIA. I, I remember talking with uh, one of the senators last week who brought this up and said that when he briefs uh, the president on, 
on intelligence matters, the president seems to uh, gets back into it, as it were, into the mode that he was when he was at the CIA in 1976, uh, and starts talking about intelligence budgets and, and satellite systems and so forth. Uh, so we have a president who still thinks that uh, that he's at the CIA almost, and uh, the world has changed. Um, and indeed, the people of this country deserve better. With Lewis Wolf, Seattle, Washington, you're next. Uh, good morning. I'd like to compliment uh, Mr. Wolf on the magazine. I read it every quarter when it comes out, and I especially like the way that the uh, stories are footnoted to give uh, the reader assurance uh, that the information is, has been confirmed uh, through other places. I'd also uh, I'd like to ask him two questions. Um, I'd like, if possible, given the time you have on the show, if it's possible for Mr. Wolf to summarize what his magazine has turned up uh, in reference to Mr. Gates' involvement with the Iran-Contra situation, and also given the information that has been published in your magazine and has trickled into the uh, mainstream press, why people uh, still seem to be afraid to think differently and, and seem to be willing to go along with whatever our leaders say, and, and given the information that is out there, uh, seem to be in some sense of denial. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, with respect to uh, Mr. Gates's uh, record, um, we have learned that since his appointment uh, as Deputy National Security Advisor, which was in December of 1988, within two months of that appointment, two to three months of that appointment, uh, up until the time these hearings uh, began some weeks ago, uh, Mr. Gates, as Deputy National Security Advisor to uh, um, General Scowcroft uh, at the White House, uh, has been the hands-on manager of the CIA. And I say that with full knowledge of what that means. Uh, obviously, Mr. Webster, Judge Webster, until his recent retirement, uh, was the director of central intelligence. I would not suggest that he wasn't. But in terms of, uh, like a, if you think of it in terms of a chief executive officer, in effect that's what Mr. Uh, Gates has been. This morning at the hearing, uh, Senator Hollings of South Carolina uh, stated in open hearing that, uh, uh, and as far as I know it was, uh, although it was challenged by Mr. Rudman of New Hampshire, uh, he's, uh, Mr. Hollings stated that Gates is the chief architect of U.S. foreign policy. Now that's a quite a, an extraordinary statement, and I think it deserves uh, further uh, investigation, what he means and what, he, what Mr. Hollings was referring to. Uh, as to Iran-Contra, obviously uh, Robert Gates knows more than, and knew more and was in the loop, despite his uh, uh, suggestion that he wasn't. Uh, as Mr. Casey's number one deputy, uh, he was certainly privy to many of the activities uh, uh, going on at the time. Now he says, and I think truthfully, that he was not an uh, oper operations specialist. He wasn't involved in his career in operations. He was not familiar with how the di operations directorate works. Well, that's, that's, I'm afraid, an easy and a very convenient way to avoid the question. Obviously, he, he didn't have experience in operations, but he certainly uh, knew enough to write a very explicit memorandum in 1984 uh, suggesting that the United States should bomb Nicaragua, should carry out air, massive airstrikes of Nicaragua. And it's an extraordinary document. And you, those of you who haven't read about it or heard about it, you should ask your senator for a copy of that document. I think it's a very revealing insight into Mr. Gates' uh, uh, thinking. Uh, likewise, uh, there are numerous uh, instances where he says he didn't know, uh, for example, about the uh, decision to s sell arms to Iran, when in fact the record now shows that he was aware at an early date of this, long before even uh, it became uh, public, long before uh, the finding which was issued by uh, and signed uh, at the behest of Mr. Casey and with the knowledge of Mr. Gates uh, that involved the President of the United States uh, in, and, and presented him with a finding that there were moderates in Iran. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, that's, that's shown to be uh, not the case. Time for another caller. Kimmer, Louisiana. Good day to you. 
Uh, yes, uh, I've been listening to the program for a while, and Mr. Wolf was really painting Goodman as having a lot of credibility. And I sat up one night and watched the hearing with Mr. Goodman testifying. And I, I told myself, well, he must have something when he keeps going. But at the end of it, he comes out, he was trying to beatify the lady that was on the panel with him. How good she was, how intelligent, how honest, the edu education she had. And then he, need, he brings out the name of Stephen Cohn, that she was one of his, uh, Stephen Cohn's principal students. And then I saw the picture. Stephen Cohn is a fella who will, he will do anything to praise or guarantee a favorable picture of the Soviet Union. I've been watching him for years, and I've never heard him criticize what the Soviet Union, the KBG, or anybody did. Uh, it's hard to respond to your question. I don't remember the reference to Stephen Cohn. I'm sorry. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Robert Gates' uh, detractors, among them uh, certainly Melvin Goodman, who it should be remembered, uh, had been promoted by William Casey, uh, by Robert Gates. Uh, he was uh, right up to uh, a very short time before his testimony, uh, well, actually a couple of years before that, when he went, went to work for the National War College, where he is today. Uh, he is not uh, a man who could be considered a, a fellow traveler of the Soviet Union or anything like that. Um, he was a very loyal employee at the CIA, but he had very substantial and very principled uh, reasons, and I, uh, my understanding from reading the record and from actually speaking with him, that uh, he is a man who uh, isn't given to these things very easily. Uh, I, I might point out, of course, that the, he was not the only witness. He is the one who's been singled out as the, in this hearing today, as the only, only really important person to remember, Hal Ford who was a man who's highly regarded in Washington, who testified and, and, and who had come, come forth to support Gates until he started to get new information about uh, Gates, which uh, he hadn't known before. He was talking with, he said, 18 or 20 people at the CIA who offered him very detailed information. Uh, and Hal Ford came forward, and it was apparently he who swayed the committee away from holding this vote, which was held this morning, uh, two weeks ago. And uh, subsequently, those hearings were held and the testimony was given. Another 12 minutes with Lois Wolf, Burlington, Vermont. Uh, good day to you. You're next. Uh, good day. Uh, I'd like to ask your guest, uh, why does it appear that every nominee who has been appointed by Reagan and Bush uh, is afflicted uh, with Alzheimer's disease or is a liar? And uh, now I'd like to know what the chances will be that the October surprise will be thoroughly investigated. Thank you. Uh, sometimes I think I have a, a slight touch of Alzheimer's because sometimes I can't remember things that I should remember, but uh, to be serious about it, I think you're right. Um, George Bush seems to have a little bit of it. Uh, some of the senators in this committee also seem to forget uh, some of the public record uh, and some of the uh, acknowledged uh, facts by President Reagan, who, for example, uh, at one point said that uh, he wished, if he had it to do over again, after he saw Rambo, the film Rambo, at the White House, he said he could have done it, uh, uh, that being uh, um, the U.S. invasion at that time of, uh, of um, country in, in Central America, in, in Latin America, in the Caribbean. Uh, my point is that uh, it's many times that we face up to the fact that public officials aren't being honest with us. Uh, they are not being fully frank with us, and they're not even being credible. Uh, it's not just the president, but uh, uh, people in intelligence, their business is lying. Um, I remember talking with a, a former CIA officer who said that in their training, they taught us first and foremost, you are a spy. Whatever else your specialty is, you're a spy, and uh, in the training, in the tradecraft that they're trained, uh, a lot of what they're trained is in, is in how to disinform and to, and to lie and to deceive. Unfortunately, it's not quite uh, as James Bond would have us believe. Um, as for the question of uh, whether we're being told the truth, whether we're being 
really uh, dealt with as in a very frank and open way as citizens, I'm afraid that that's also not the case. Uh, we have learned, for example, that, uh, that the CIA has carried out uh, domestic operations. I'm sure many of your list the listeners know of the involvement of the CIA in, in MKUltra, a, a, an operation which went on for many years in this country uh, secretly, um, despite the, the uh, clear law uh, saying that the CIA cannot carry out domestic operations. There was Operation Chaos, which millions of Americans, law-abiding citizens, were targeted by the CIA. I might also say we shouldn't uh, forget the role of the FBI in, in many of these activities, but we're talking here about uh, CIA, and I think it should, should be remembered that the CIA's record is not clean. Portland, Oregon, thanks for staying on the line. You're next with Lewis Wolf. Yes, I have a quick comment and uh, a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, I think this thing with uh, Clarence Thomas the last few weeks was a cover to get the vote you got today, to keep the public's mind off of the uh, Gates uh, confirmation hearing because at one time Gates was the focus of the headlines and he was in trouble. And uh, 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 a couple other things. Uh, why wasn't he asked about the Wackenhut Corporation down in Florida? Why wasn't his connection with that? Carla, let uh, me just stop you there. Do you know what he's talking about? Yes, the uh, Wackenhut Corporation, which is a um, uh, very, uh, one of the three major private security firms in this country like Pinkerton's uh, um, and new information has has emerged about the Wackenhut's uh, role in collecting uh, and using very intrusive methods in collecting intelligence uh, and derogatory information using uh, uh, phone uh, taps uh, using mail intercepts mail covers and other other classic intelligence methods uh, which Wackenhut now says uh, were legal, I would question that, uh, and these were targeted against uh, critics of uh, uh, the environmental programs and uh, critics of the th and, and people who say that there is a very real threat, as I, I would agree, to the environment um, um, being uh, brought on by the logging industries and other, other corporations, uh, chemical and otherwise. Uh, Wackenhut, of course, has a number of former intelligence officials on its board, uh, high-ranking people, and uh, this is a matter that uh, needs to be looked into further. Portland, you have a quick follow-up? I would agree, may I just say, I would agree about, uh, just very quickly, that the, uh, the uh, question of the Thomas confirmation, certainly uh, the wave that uh, the White House is riding, if you will, um, at this moment, uh, because of the getting uh, Thomas in, he's being confirmed uh, as we speak right now, uh, I think it's, it's, it was convenient uh, that that has happened at the same time as this, as this vote today. We'll go back to Portland. One, one quick comment. Uh, I understand the reason why three of the uh, Democrats voted for Gates, especially the chairman, because it's reported that he has the, uh, some skeletons in his closet and that they have information that uh, he might be, uh, how would we put it up? Uh, ACDC and uh, Crafton, who was not running again, and he doesn't care. And Glenn, he's still with the SNL thing, and uh, so uh, I can understand the way they voted because they have some things hanging over their head. Uh, I could just say this: I know uh, from information that I've learned recently, and I'm looking into it further. Or we are the magazine is. Uh, that as many as uh, uh, of the 15 members of the committee, as many as 12 of them uh, are compromised, in particular that the CIA has information, and I don't know what that information may be. It may be true, it may be false, it may be distorted, it may be misinformation, it may be information that was uh, created out of whole cloth. I do not know, but it's information supposedly that could compromise those members of this committee. And that's being held over their heads. Uh, despite that fact, uh, some of those members, I think, uh, um, probably feel today that uh, they have no, no, nothing to hide. And I think that's probably the case. But uh, you will remember there is some precedent for this. 
that during the Hoover period at the FBI, he would do the same. He would uh, quite openly uh, go, wave things at, at members of the Congress, and, uh, and they had full dossiers on members of Congress. And uh, it's also a fact that the, uh, the Supreme Court that, uh, records, and we're, we will be writing about this soon, uh, that the Supreme Court uh, over the years has been the target of FBI uh, activities, uh, members of the Supreme Court. So. Um, uh, as for Senator Boren, I cannot speak to that. Try to get two more calls on uh, before the bottom of the hour. Belleville, New Jersey. Good morning to you. Good afternoon, I should say. Hey, good afternoon. This is the uh, first time calling C-SPAN. I have one comment and two questions. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, uh, being from Jersey is uh, not too much to be proud for, except, of course, uh, Senator Bradley's vote today. That was uh, very heartwarming. Uh, two questions. The magazine, Mr. Wolf, your magazine, is it available... I suppose only through subscription, or could a... Uh, it, it's available uh, through subscription by mail, um, as well as uh, you can buy it at uh, some newsstands and bookstores uh, around the country. It's also available overseas. Uh, we have many people who buy it uh, on the newsstands. We also have many people who subscribe. Our subscribers are a whole range of people from every walk of life in this country. Do you have a follow-up, sir? I see, yes. One last question. Uh, at from my informal count, it seems most of the calls have been critical of uh, Mr. Gates, uh, well, pretty much right down the line. And I was just wondering, uh, the statistical information, is that passed on, like, uh, to those whom it may concern, uh, like a Vox Pops, as it were? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Let's go on to another caller from Omaha. He's off the line now, but Omaha, Nebraska, you're next. Okay, uh, thanks for letting me on. Uh, I'd like to comment to the guy that's on. He's great, and uh, I wish we could get more and more people like that on, because he actually tells the truth about what's going on. And it's surprising that people here in the Midwest, they believe everything George Bush has said, and uh, as far as the Gates and the Thomas confirmation, it's an all-cover-up thing, and I'm, that's just my comment. Any reaction to his uh, view, sir? Well, I, I, I guess I, I appreciate uh, what you said, sir. I, I think that uh, part of the problem that we face in this country and part of the, the way that we are, are um, oppressed, if you will, is by the fact that the American people have a very short memory. And government tends to take advantage of that fact. Uh, you will look at some of the history books that are being written today. My own child will be reading a history book which will say, in effect, that the Vietnam War was just a, a blip in history, that will say that the Korean War uh, will distort what led up to the Korean War, that will say that Iran-Contra, I dare say, uh, was just, uh, it, well, there, there are matters on both sides, but will not tell the whole truth, and will say that the tenure of uh, William Casey, and now uh, perhaps if he's confirmed, which I think he will be, Robert Gates, uh, was just uh, a matter of government, just in the general flow of government uh, affairs. Uh, I think that uh, people should make it their business to read very carefully what the, is in their newspapers and what they see on their televisions, to look for the disinformation that is uh, pervade uh, and, and is thrust on them. And that's what we do, and that's, I think, what all citizens have a duty to do. We have less than a minute left, but what do you expect to hear on the Senate floor uh, next week, if it is next week, when the vote takes place? Uh, I would expect to hear pretty much what we heard today. I think it will go down uh, um, uh, probably, uh, he may get a few votes, a few more votes against him, Mr. Gates, but uh, mostly, if, if not almost entirely, Democrats. Uh, but the problem is that most of the members of the Senate haven't been uh, watching these hearings very closely. Uh, haven't been looking for the nuances that uh, came through in some of the, the, the ums and ahs of Mr. Gates, the pregnant pauses and the I, t I don't knows and the I, and I forgets. Uh, these will be unfortunately forgotten in the, in the speed in, with which uh, these hearings and, and this vote will probably take place. Lewis Wolf, co-editor of Covert Action Information Bulletin, thank you for your time today. Thank you. A couple of programming notes as well for you. Coming up at uh, 2 o'clock in about 90 minutes, we will have live coverage from the South Lawn of the White House. 
of the swearing-in ceremony of Judge Clarence Thomas to be the newest Associate Justice for the U.S. Supreme Court. At 5 o'clock Eastern Time, Road to the White House. Our viewer call in at 6.30. And then at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock for our Pacific Coast viewers, we will re-air this morning's Intelligence uh, Committee hearings for uh, Robert Gates to be the new head of the CIA. On that note, we thank you for watching. Have a good afternoon. That concludes our coverage of the vote on the confirmation of Robert Gates to serve as Director of Central Intelligence. We will bring you these proceedings again in their entirety tonight at 8.05 Eastern Time, 5.05 p.m. Pacific Time. Here is a reminder to join us tonight for a roundtable discussion about congressional reform. Our guests will be Birch Bayh, a former Democrat.